Professor Alan Dershowitz, great to see you again. Thank you for being here. Thank you. All right, let's start with uh, Andrew McCabe, the former acting director of the FBI, and what he had to say about former FBI director James Comey getting fired. Let's take a listen. People were shocked. We had lost our leader, a leader who was um, respected and liked by the vast majority of FBI employees. People were very sad. And Professor, that all way very, may very well be true, but what about uh, the way Comey mishandled Hillary Clinton's email investigation. The DOJ Inspector General's report said that Comey's decision, quote, negatively impacted the perception of the FBI and the department as fair administrators of justice. Do you think uh, Andrew McCabe is kind of glossing over that in his glowing um, description of James Comey? Well, he certainly is. I think that Hillary Clinton would have fired him on day one if she had gotten elected. And Donald Trump should have fired him on day one. He had disqualified himself from being the head of the FBI by the way he violated FBI rules, mishandled the entire Hillary Clinton investigation, applied a double standard to the Hillary Clinton investigation and to the Trump investigation, and uh, generally disqualified himself from serving with any kind of credibility as head of the FBI. The problem with Trump was his timing. He waited too long to fire him, and then he said during um, a meeting with Russians, well, now I don't have this Russian problem anymore. It led people like McCabe to believe that there was a direct relationship between the firing and a desire to stop the investigation of any kind of alleged Russian collusion. In that case, then, do you think this was just an overreaction by guys like Andrew McCabe, that they just couldn't handle this? And based on what the president was doing, it may be ill-advised, but they overreacted then? Well, I think they came in with a predisposition against uh, President Trump, as many in the FBI did. Many also came in with a predisposition in his favor. It was very, very divided uh, FBI. But I think they clearly overreacted. Any conceivable discussion of the application of the 25th Amendment is such a clear attempt to circumvent the Constitution. The Constitution provides for two mechanisms of removal. The one impeachment, that's for crimes. And if he had committed crimes, which I don't believe he had, Impeachment was the proper method. The other is the 25th Amendment, which obviously deals with the kind of physical incapacity that Woodrow Wilson had or Ronald Reagan had for the hours after he was shot right. or uh, other presidents may in the future have. It didn't have any application to if a president committed a crime or did something wrong or you disagreed with his policies or you think he was uh, somehow psychologically uh, uh, in difficulty, as long as he was capable of administering his office, the 25th Amendment doesn't apply. Now, President Trump hinted that that might have been something illegal. Others say it's a coup. Lindsey Graham say, is calling for an investigation. You've hinted the idea of some sort of coup involved here. Now that you've heard more from McCabe, you know more about this story, do you think this was could be classified as some sort of coup by guys like McCabe? I don't think we have enough information. I think that the senators correct there ought to be hearings. McCabe ought to be put under oath. We ought to get as much documentation as possible. And then once we know whether there was a serious discussion, a serious consideration of wiring um, uh, uh, the attorney, deputy attorney general, of actually going around to cabinet members and seeking their approval for invocation of the 25th Amendment, if the evidence supports that, then surely the word unconstitutional coup is uh, a, a plausible interpretation of what happened, but we have to get the facts first. What does your gut tell you about this, the, the wearing the wire? Was it a joke? Was it said in jest? How serious do you think these guys were about doing that? Rosenstein does not strike me as a joker. He's a very serious guy. I think he put it out there as a possibility. I think the 25th Amendment was discussed as a possibility. They didn't settle on it. They didn't act on it. So it's somewhere between Let's consider this issue and maybe we should take some serious action. But it's neither a joke nor is it a completed coup. Uh, at, at best, it would be an attempted coup if they really went beyond the point of simply discussing it and started to put plans in operation. But we'd need evidence to support that. And right now, I don't see that evidence. At this point, it sounds more like a discussion. But that discussion, if it was a serious one, is sufficient to disqualify Rod Rosenstein from being Deputy Attorney General of the United States. Nobody who serves so high in the government should be seriously considering invoking the 25th Amendment 
for Donald Trump back at the time when these discussions occurred. I see how long it lasts now that there's a new sheriff in town, almost a new sheriff in town with William Barr going over to the DOJ. All right. Back in November, Professor, you hinted that uh, the Mueller report would be, quote, devastating to the president. I want to know if, if you still think that, still feel that way. Well, every report filed by every special counsel and every special prosecutor unrebutted is devastating. Uh, look, remember the Starr report uh, and other reports, uh, the report of the investigating group uh, uh, that looked into the first president, uh, Bush. They were all devastating. Then you have a chance to respond to them. And what I would hope is that the new attorney general would get the Mueller report, read it, turn it over at this point, not to Congress, but to the Trump legal team, give them 10 days to file a responsive report, and then disclose as much as is possible to disclose of both reports at the same time to Congress and to the public. Of course, disclosing it to Congress is disclosing it to the public, because it would immediately leak if it were critical of President Trump, which it surely will be. And maybe not if it's critical, if it's not critical of President Trump, too. We know there were members of Congress who want to get that information out as well, too. Uh, real quickly, Professor, you've been a lifelong Democrat. You said you supported Hillary Clinton. I wanted to get your uh, take real quickly on any of the 2020 candidates so far catching your eye. Well, you know, I'm hoping that uh, a, a strong candidate will emerge. Um, the ideal candidate would be a 55 year old Joe Biden. Um, hmm. But. Uh, one may have to choose between a 75-year-old Joe Biden and a 55-year-old somebody else. The Democrats need a centrist, somebody who will return the party to its centrist roots, uh, liberal centrist roots. It must reject the hard left. Uh, it can't allow these new young Congress women um, to become the face of the Democratic Party. That's a losing strategy. Just remember what happened when they nominated McGovern, when they nominated Dukakis, when they uh, nominated others uh, who were perceived as too liberal to the country. They win Massachusetts and they win New York and sometimes win California, but you can't win the Midwest and you can't become president unless you win uh, some Midwestern states, some Western states, some Southern states, the kinds of states that Hillary Clinton should have won but didn't win. So yeah, some, of these, some of these candidates are going to have to bend themselves in all kinds of rhetorical gymnastic positions to if they want to win a general election. Anybody you think that the president at this point should be the most concerned about out of that field? Well, right now, I don't think the Democrats have settled um, on not only a candidate, but on a type of candidate. Of course, the president should be worried about any plausible Democrat because his own uh, numbers are not particularly uh, high. Um, and he may get a big favor from the Democrats if they nominate a Sanders or uh, somebody of that uh, political persuasion, he's going to walk into uh, victory in the next election. But if they nominate somebody in the center, uh, he will have a battle. So he has to worry about centrists who can appeal to the Midwest. The ideal candidate would be a centrist from a Midwest state who has union support, who has support uh, among working class people. Uh, the traditional Democratic base that many of whom went over to Trump in the last election. Yeah, that, that person may have gone the way of the dodo bird. Last question for you. I want to go back to this uh, emergency declaration. And uh, Javier Becerra, the attorney general of California, says he's already preparing a lawsuit. How problematic do you think these legal challenges are going to be to the president's emer emergency declaration? Oh, they'll be problematic because all you need is a couple of judges to grant stays. And that will be a statement that there's no real emergency. My own view is it's not an emergency when there's been a longstanding problem that Congress could have solved uh, by giving money and chose not to. Uh, that's not the kind of emergency that I think was contemplated by the emergency statute. And I think Congress has the ability to stop the president from spending that money if they simply go back and revise the statute and say it's not applicable to uh, emergencies, quote, caused by the failure of Congress, particularly the House which under the Constitution initiates all spending bills, to pass a statute uh, giving the president what he wanted. That just doesn't sound like an emergency. Now, the president can veto that. And then the question is, does Congress think more about its authority and its power or more about partisan benefits? Mm. And will there be a two-thirds enough to overrule uh, a veto? That's the hard question that remains. And that's the Constitution. That's what makes it so great. Professor Alan Dershowitz, thanks so much. Great to see you. Thank you. All right, when we come back, was it all staged? New evidence suggests that Empire star Josie Smollett paid two men to orchestrate the alleged attack on him in Chicago last month. We'll break it all down for you next.
just watched Newsmax TV, America's fastest growing news channel, now in 65 million homes. Get Newsmax TV on all the major cable systems or go to NewsmaxTV.com and click on the Find Newsmax tab to locate us. Remember, Newsmax TV, where real news for real people.